Hi, I'm Ivan from Webwash, and in today's video, I'll show you how to integrate Webform and MailChimp. And you will learn how to send Webform submissions into MailChimp. And to implement all of this, we'll use the module aptly named Webform MailChimp, which I have opened up right here. Now, this module is pretty simple. All it does is that it implements a custom handler in web form, but it does download a bunch of dependencies. So I recommend that you use Composer to download the module. It'll download MailChimp API PHP library, which is a third party library, and also the MailChimp module for Drupal to handle API connections and stuff like that. So I do recommend that you download it using Composer. And if we scroll down, we can see that there is a stable version and it actually recommends that you use Composer, which is something new on drupal.org. It's actually harder to find the zip version of the module. I think if you click on here, can you access it? Oh, you can. Okay, so it's one step away. So you can see that drupal.org is pushing to use Composer, which is the standard way of downloading modules. Okay, let's go ahead now and set up Webform MailChimp and also the MailChimp module on a freshly installed Drupal site. So here, oh, before I jump over, sorry, I forgot to mention, we do have a text version of this video. So if you prefer the written word and you don't wanna to listen to me talk, because my accent can be a bit annoying for some people, I would imagine, head over to webwash.net, search for it, just Google webwash, web form submissions, MailChimp, and you will find the text version uh, of this video. So to get started, here is my Drupal 9 site. Now, this may look a little different to your standard Drupal 9 site because uh, I am using the two new uh, themes. So we have a new front end theme and we have a new back end theme which I believe should be stable for Drupal 10, which is going to be released in a, well, middle of this year. So to make sure my videos don't look out of date too quick, I'm gonna start using these new front end and back end themes. So the first thing we need to do is download the module. Jump over to terminal and type in composer require Drupal slash web form MailChimp. And because this is a freshly installed Drupal site, I'll also download web form. And here you can see that Composer downloaded Drupal MailChimp. So Drupal slash MailChimp and also this PHP library. Perfect. Now let's jump back to our Drupal site, go to extend and search for web form because I will install web form UI. And let's just search for web form MailChimp and just install this module because this module, I believe has a dependency on MailChimp. Yes, so it'll handle installing its dependencies. Now, the first thing we need to do is configure the API key for MailChimp. Now to do that, just go to configuration and then scroll all the way down and you should see MailChimp. If you can't see it, make sure the MailChimp module is installed. And here you can see MailChimp API key and then click on this link and this will take you directly to the API page and make sure you are logged into MailChimp. To create an API key, just click on create a key, give it a second and I'll give it a label so it's easier to see where contacts have come from. Copy the API key, go back into Drupal, paste it in there and click on save configuration. Now. Don't worry about this failed to load MailChimp PHP library because if we refresh, it is gone, okay? So now at this point, we have configured the MailChimp module um, because I believe it's only used um, to connect to MailChimp using this API key. Now let's configure a web form to send contacts into MailChimp. So to do that, let's go to structure, web forms, and to save a bit of time, we'll use the default contact form, which is created when you install a web form. And I'll close this. Now to send contacts, all we need to do is configure a handler on the form. So go to operations, settings, then emails slash handlers, click on add handler. 
and you should see MailChimp. If you can't see it, make sure the web form MailChimp module is installed and then give it a title if you like, or just leave it as MailChimp. Make sure you have an audience or a list. That's what they used to be called in MailChimp. So if you go here, make sure you've created an audience here. I've already done that. That's why I can see WebWash test audience and make sure your form has an email field and it's been mapped in the handler because when you create a contact in MailChimp, I think the email is the only required property because you are sending emails from MailChimp, obviously. And leave everything as it is. The only thing I'll do purely for this video is disable double opt-ins, but you should have it enabled on a proper site just so that you can see things um, happen a lot quicker without me having to uh, confirm things. Okay, so at this point we have created the handler. Let's click on save handlers and let's go to test and test out the form. And I'll enter in Ivan plus webform at webwash.net. So that is my email. If I click on send message, it'll create the submission. And if everything's been configured correctly, we should see the email in here. And here it is, Ivan plus one two webform at webwash.net. So the handler sent that information over to MailChimp. Now let's take this form one step further and let's add in a subscribe to newsletter checkbox, which means that when the checkbox is checked, then a contact will be sent to MailChimp. If the checkbox stays unchecked, it won't do anything. So let me just copy over the correct label just so I've spelt it right. Give me one second. And let's go to build, then click on add element because we have to add a checkbox and then click on add element for checkbox. And I'll enter in the title of subscribe to newsletter. You can add whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. And then click on save and let's click on save elements and then click on test. And we should see our subscribe to newsletter down at the bottom, which is great. Now we need to configure the handler to conditionally send off the contact only if this checkbox is actually checked. So to do that, go back to the handler. So settings, emails slash handlers, edit the handler, and this time click on conditions. And from state, select enabled. And from the drop down, select subscribe to newsletter, checked. So this means that the handler will be enabled if subscribe to newsletter is checked. Then click on save, then click on save handlers. And let's go back to, no, not that one, click on test. So let's test it out. And I'll enter in an email. So one, two, web form. Okay, let me copy that. But first, let's uncheck the checkbox, send the message, and let's refresh. And the email should not be here because we unchecked the checkbox. Okay, it's working. Let's go back to the form. Well, we can go back and check the checkbox. Click on send message. And now the email should be here. So look out for Ivan plus one, two, WF underscore con, con D. And here it is. So now we have configured web form to conditionally send contacts over to MailChimp. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is how to send custom fields from the submission over to MailChimp. And what we'll do now is populate the first name and last name from WebForm into MailChimp. Now, to do that, we first have to create a first name and last name in the form. So let's go back to Drupal. Let's go back to our form and let's get rid of this your name Click on build and let's delete your name because we need a separate first name and last name. Then click on add element and let's add a text field. This will be first name. Then click on add, then click on add element again. And this will be last name. 
then click on save. And let's reorder the first name and last name to the top. Click on save elements and let's make it required. Okay, and if we go to test, we can see first name and last name, perfect. Now we need to configure the handler to map these fields across when it sends the contact to MailChimp. Now to do that, let's go back into settings, handlers and edit our handler. And what we need to do is we need to add in a bit of code. It's pretty simple and you need to add it into this merge vars. So here we have F name and Earl name. These are the machine names for the fields in MailChimp. And then we have a token which populates it with first name and last name. Now, this first name and last name is the key of, of the element. So make sure this key, first name underscore, first underscore name and last underscore name matches this key right here. And finally, you wanna make sure this machine name also matches the name in MailChimp. Now, to find these fields in MailChimp, let's go to, to the, I think, audience field, fields, I think that is it. Yes, here it is. So make sure this name matches this right here. So click on save, then save handlers. Let's clean up a few of these tabs. Then click on test and let's do one final test. So I'll put in my name, first name, Ivan, last name, Rugets. And then my email will be Ivan plus one, two, a web form, first, last, at webwash.net. And make sure you check subscribe to newsletter. Click on send. And if we go back, to MailChimp, go to all contacts. We should see the contact right here with the first name and last name populated. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a like and also subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna learn more about Drupal and WordPress and other CMSs when I have time to write about them, head over to webwash.net. And if you wanna learn more about Webform, we do have a free course on using webform over at webwash.net. So just Google webform webwash course and you'll find it. Anyway, I am Ivan. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.